Hello, hello. It's been a while. Um, so we are in a new moon, but before I forget, um, as always, I'm doing readings, info in the description to book a reading with me. And I only have a couple more slots still available for after the Christmas holiday. I know a lot of people like to buy readings as gifts. So if you're interested in buying a gift for a loved one, I really recommend uh, booking a reading with me, just reaching out through the description uh, information and uh, emailing me and, and we'll make sure that your loved one gets that reading. I, I make sure that there's a lot of time available after the holiday for people who enjoy getting readings uh, to be able to get a reading as a gift. So um, again, just a couple more slots available. So reach out to me if you'd like to get uh, a reading for somebody else or if you'd just like to get a reading for yourself, then we can book before them. Um, but I do ask that uh, of course, when you're buying a reading as a gift that the person actually does appreciate astrology, you know, I don't want to, it's, it's painful for both of us, <laughs> yeah, me and the other person, if it's, uh, I don't know, painful is maybe a dramatic word, but I, I want to be able to read for people who are open-minded and open-hearted, even if they don't know anything about astrology, who are just like, oh, okay, yeah, I'll give it a shot, whatever, we'll see what it is, um, then it's beautiful, positive experience, otherwise, I think, I mean, the worst that could happen is it's, just, it's boring for them or something. Um, but I prefer to read for people who are open-minded, open-hearted. So uh, that's the one one criterion that I ask. But uh, in any case, yeah, I do love doing readings for people, whether they know about astrology or not. Um, so if you'd like to buy a gift for somebody, uh, recommend doing that or booking reading for yourself, like I said. Okay, let's get into it. So we are in a new moon period. I meant to do um, a Thanksgiving video uh, as well as a new moon video. I'm a couple days late. So we are actually in the second part of the new moon phase. But I mean, there's like, what, 12 parts overall. We're still in the, the beginning of this lunar cycle. So in general, this lunar cycle is seeing a lot more momentum forward. We still have Mars retrograde in Gemini. We'll get to that. That's a factor that we need to consider. But overall, we're at a time period of excitement. Let's move forward. Especially the last two months, um, we've seen a lot of retrogrades. And those retrogrades are coming to a close. Saturn has gone direct. Jupiter has gone direct. We still have the post-retrograde shadow period for both of these astronomical bodies. So what does this all mean? We still need to be patient. Mars is retrograde. Especially, well, we'll get into the details of how and why to be patient. But we still need to be patient, but we are moving forward in really amazing, even dramatic ways. And we're able to, by leaps and bounds, move forward. Um, let's get into the details for Mars, because it's that's really the key. As long as we just keep Mars in mind, then we're able to work through those challenges and move forward in a way that's responsible and doesn't end up, you know, crash and burn uh, or going too quickly, which is all kind of the same thing. We just need to be patient. Um, if we start to overthink things, we need to focus on what we can do in the practical world, the, the little details of life. It's really easy at this time to think that we know everything. Every energy is beautiful, but every energy has its unconscious shadow side as well. And it's not inevitable, but for all of us, we are going to struggle with the unconscious shadow side of, of our natal energies as well as the transient energies at any time in our, our lives. And right now, Sun, Mercury, and Venus, and Saj, as much as there's so much good there, and we'll get to that in just a moment, I think it shadow unconscious side is being triggered by the Mars retrograde Gemini, and, and really it goes either way. Like, you know, if one is acting unconsciously for thinking and, and saying words and, and doing actions that are in an unconscious fashion, the other's gonna get triggered and it can be really dicey very quick uh, with things being said or hurting people, etc. So the big kind of pitfalls here that we want to be mindful of to not fall into is thinking that we know everything, focusing too much on our own mind, our own ego. Mercury and Sag in, in particular, I love that energy for so many reasons. Again, I love all energy, but as a Gemini with Mercury, Gemini, I appreciate Mercury and Sag so much. But it is one of those energies that we have to be very mindful of. We have to work with very consciously because it's a rough energy. Its challenges can sometimes be easier to fall into than other energies. So again, the challenge here is thinking we know everything. I think being self-righteous and thinking like they are so wrong. And I think especially with Mars being in Gemini, 
arguing again i really wish uh, you know life god inspires all of us and i'm just going with the flow like everyone uh I, I intended to do a reading before Thanksgiving because I think a lot of people probably got into some Thanksgiving squabbles that were just unnecessary. But for whatever reason, you know, God has inspired this video after Thanksgiving. So, and it's good to keep this in mind in general. Thanksgiving is just one day. This is for the next two weeks um, and arguably for the next month because the sun in Sagittarius and the lunar cycle. So anyways, long story short, let's focus on the great positives of Sagittarius, which is ironically on the conscious spectrum, openness, curiosity, inquisitiveness, wanting to learn, wanting to grow. And I, I'm enjoying this so much um, of being able to to expand our minds, to expand our horizons, to expand our knowledge um, and in a very fun way, in a very exciting way. And, you know, I, you know, I think with this too, um, Oh, so many thoughts. I think with this too, simplicity is key. It's just simplify like what do you need to learn? How do you need to grow? Because it can be a little bit overwhelming of just like so much potential. You might be pulled in a lot of different directions at this time. Simplify. Just right here, right now in this present moment, what do you want to do? How do you want to learn? How do you want to grow? And if you do that, I think you'll be able to deal with the other kind of unconscious shadow period, unconscious shadow challenge rather of all the Sagittarius and Mars and Gemini, which is to be too scattered, which oftentimes leads to the kind of being irritated or restless or impatient, which leads to the pointless squabble, saying things without thinking and hurting people, which all these energies together, you know, that makes that, that big pitfall. So um, yeah, simplify folks on the present moment, breathe, calm down, root yourself, and just focus on the details that you need to prepare and take care of right now again this lunar cycle is all about momentum and it's all about action we need to take our time with it but overall we are moving forward in a lot of cool ways and i think that um um as always with every new moon period even though we're technically in the second phase not the first phase still we are basically in the new moon period of the next four four weeks so focus on how do you want to grow specifically concretely over the next month in ways that are fun, even with stuff that you need to do or accomplish, focus on ways to make it fun, make it playful. And I think that's one of the best things of, of this particular time too, is Mercury is conjunct Venus and Sag, a little one Sun and Sag. So there's a lot of, as long as you avoid arguments and trying to impose your will on other people, uh, which is easy enough to do with awareness. Oh, okay, let's not, <laughs> oh, okay, let's breathe. Okay, I'm more calm now. Okay, you know, deeper breath than that, but you get it. Um, then you can enjoy the the fun part of all of this, which is again adventure, exploration, especially with close loved ones, being able to have really great conversations that that open up possibilities, that make you laugh and just have a good time. That's one of the best things whenever Mercury and Venus are conjunct in general, and especially when they're conjunct in a fire energy like Sag. So there's a lot of really positive energy here, as long as we don't let it go to our heads, basically. Um, there's always more to talk about, but I, I go on and on. I think just uh, two last things. So moon is in Capricorn for the next like 48 hours, something like that. Um, and the big thing with this is to stay emotionally available. Moon and Cap can sometimes shut down on emotions. Let's so stay emotionally available. And um, let's be patient. Let's not be too pessimistic. And that's the beautiful part of of cap is the patience, but also let's focus concretely. What do we need to get done? You know, again, this is the beginning of a lunar cycle, so there's so much promise. There's always opportunities and, and newness. Um, but of course, you know, we may imagine the opportunities, but if we don't actually put the work in and, and make it part of our schedule, you know, put time and, and energy aside to do something, then we're not going to do it. So that's what the next couple of days, really, basically this weekend, has to offer us. And I think one last thing. Another thing on Mars, Mars, we've been talking about this a lot. Mars retrograde in Gem is square both Neptune and Jupiter in Pisces. And so if you do feel that urge to just like launch a word at somebody uh, in an aggressive fashion, if you feel like, oh, God, I just keep, want, I'm being irritated, I just want to fight somebody with argument. Um, or I guess in general, but I think the big thing here is our mind and our words that we need to be really mindful of not causing major conflict that is completely unnecessary, which is a major potential pitfall here. If you're finding yourself doing that, um, or just, you know, it's good to keep this in mind regardless, look at the root cause. 
look at the root of why am I angry? Like, why am I really angry? Oh, somebody said this. Oh, somebody cut me off. No, no, no. Like at the root cause, the root, right? Not the, the surface, the root, the core. Why am I angry? What am I afraid of? Because where does anger come from ultimately? Fear. What am I afraid of? And then focus on that. Make that situation better. And you'll find that you have no quarrels with anybody. And indeed, you notice like, oh, this is a waste of both of our time to be so negative or be so narrow minded of this is how it must be or blah, 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 etc. Um, find the core. It can be a little bit nebulous sometimes. It can be a little tricky to do so because Mars square Neptune and since Mercury square Neptune and Venus is square Neptune, it's like you have to really reflect on it. You have to take a moment and not just let your mind answer, but let your body answer, let your heart answer and explore it. Just keep asking questions. That's the best part of Sagittarius and Gemini energy, asking questions. It's not so much about finding answers. Like, yes, answers come and that's great and wonderful, beautiful. But the most important part of the process of learning is asking questions. And really, life is learning. We're constantly, we should be learning anyways. Uh, it's only those who stop asking questions, who think they have answers and they cling to the answers. They're, they're the ones who want to start arguments because otherwise it's like, well, I don't know. What does this learn? Like, what do you think? What do you think? Let me read a book. Let me watch a movie. You know what I mean? It's like, stay open. Stay open. Um, but again, I think going back to uh, that square, just seek to be clear about what's really bothering you. Hmm. As always, I'm doing readings. Yada, yada, yada. You know, I say it every video. Infinite love to you, my friends. Namaste. Peace.